I'm really happy and it's my pleasure to be talking to you, Tan Mei, uh, today. Could you please introduce yourself and what do you do for business? Thank you, Noor. My name is Tanma Shravastava. I'm a documentary filmmaker and producer, and I'm also a high school senior, grade 12. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, like you have started your career uh, quite early. Yes, I started when I was uh, 11 years of age in 2014, maybe. So I started uh, when I was 11. And uh, since then, I've been creating short documentaries and short films. And how do you feel about it? I feel very good, you know, um, it gives me an opportunity to, to tell um, certain stories which are completely forgotten by many people, historical stories, because my focus, my, my, most of my films are based on historical stories about a place, uh, people and different cultures. So it helps me a lot to share my details and research to hundreds of people who like to watch films and like to know different stories from around the world. Why did, do you choose this kind of input? Well, um, I'll tell you what, at, at first I decided that I should write a book, but then I realized that, uh, you know, it, to read a 500 page book, a person will take three days or four days, sometimes a week or month, but to watch a 10 minute film, he's gonna just take 10 minutes. And uh, I said, if I can share my story on a film or a book, film is a better option. So it, it helps me to, share my story in a very short period of time rather than allowing a week for a book. Yeah, okay. Do you think you are uh, selecting the topics and the input for the videos that is popular? I wouldn't say popular because the, uh, my, almost most of my topics, they are very like forgotten stories. Not many people know about it, but they're very inspiring. For example, I recently created a documentary about a neo-Nazi organization in the United States before the Second World War. Not many people know, knew about it, but uh, it, it was a very interesting project. And now that project is up for Oscars. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, great. So uh, what are the requirements to make a good film? Idea. You know, you just need to have ideas and uh, then, you know, one by one, everything will come to you. You know, um, sometimes you don't need money to make a film. Sometimes you do if you're making a very high level and actors kind of film. But the money, the, film, the films I make, like they require almost zero dollars. You know, I just ha have to take uh, royalty free footages, uh, free music. And of course, the software is free so you can use it. That's interesting. And what kind of films do you need uh, finances for? Um, well, documentaries that requires interviewing people. So you have to purchase cameras or rent cameras. You have to rent uh, footages from different sources, for example, the government archives and uh, anything else. And uh, when you create a film with actors, you need sets and actors and everything. Do you think uh, like filmmaking will, uh, filmmaking will give you the suitable portal to speak to the world, to deliver your message? I believe yes. Filmmaking, through filmmaking, we can you know, teach people, we can inspire them to do different things. Um, and you know, we can share our ideas with them. Uh, through, a, through a certain story, we can share how one man from a poor family can go and become a rich guy. So I believe, yes, we can share our ideas and our thoughts uh, to motivate and influence people around the world. Let me ask you this question. You are selecting topics that are cultural, that are uh, popular, that are worldwide, of worldwide interest. Mm -hmm. Why are you not interested in the topics that interest your generation? Well, we are interested in that topic, but you know, it requires a certain level of education and I've never been to a film school in my life. Uh, and uh, you know, um, I'm learning how to make certain documentaries or certain films so hopefully in future we'll, we'll make such film like, films like that. Do you think there is a difference between the older generation and your own generation in dealing with these films? I believe yes. You know, sometimes when I feel that, uh, when, I, when I show my film to older people, older people, if I'd say above 60, um, they would be like, there is no, uh, there is no scope in, in the line of filmmaking. And, you know, you should go for, I mean, I grew up in India, so usually what people would say, you know, go for engineering, go for medical, <laughs> go for that. And there's no scope in filmmaking. 
But when I show to young people, to young directors, because I've been to many film festivals in the US and Europe, they'd be like, you know, keep going like this because the world needs such stories. Right now, the situations we are facing, whether it's political, environmental and everything, we need certain stories from the past to inspire us to avoid such uh, incidents and problems in the future and, the, and in the present. Do you think you are making films that are commercial enough? I believe yes. You know, my I, I have um, I have I have films coming up on Amazon Prime in the coming months, and yeah, we're doing very well commercially as well. Excellent. What are the challenges in this kind of uh, business? Plenty of challenges, I'd say. Uh, number one, you have to choose a story that is interesting and not boring. Because uh, from a personal experience, I made, I made a film in 2017 about, about, about a story of Second World War, and it was very, it was very boring. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the first thing is to choose a very interesting story, but, but the story that will motivate people and share your message. Then another challenge is, is, to, challenge is to find f a certain footage, footages and images that will, that will be suitable in the film. And then the biggest challenge is the music. You know, it won't take you much time to put the videos and pictures together, but it will take hundreds of hours to, put, to get, the, uh, get the perfect music and put it on. What are the requirements, or let me I rephrase the question, how do you assess a film? Like, how do you assess this is going to uh, make it, this is going to be successful? Well, after creating, we, what I do is that when I complete a movie, I will show, show it to a bunch of people. Uh, in my in my circle, and I'll I'll first note what are their responses. If a majority of people have good response, then I believe that you know this film's gonna uh, this gonna film this film will be successful because most of the people in my circle they are producers, they are very successful directors. So you know if they think the film is good, then I believe it will be successful. Like, don't you have a kind of a checklist? Like, if this item is in the film, it's successful. If this item exists, it is not. I do, yes. Um, I recently, uh, when, I, when I was making my film, The Bunt, about the neo-Nazi organization, um, I was looking for a footage in which uh, there would be some people of the organization speaking about it. And that was very much on my checklist because, you know, I was like, if I can have this footage, um, then, you know, it'll have a very scary effect on the film and then it'll be very successful. But if I have, if I do not have it and I just have, you know, floating pictures on the screen, then I don't think so that it's going to be successful at all. How much creativity do you use in your, in filmmaking? Well, um, a lot actually, um, you know, at first, um, you, we need to take the footage. Now these, these footages are like 80 years old, 60 years old. So at that time they didn't have much uh, perfect images and perfect uh, systems. So, you know, we have to come, we have to turn it into HD. We have to clear out everything and the music we have to um, clear it out and when it'll start, when it'll end. So sometimes I compose my own music for the film. So yeah, you know, we pr pretty much use a lot of creativity. Okay, let's go to, um, like you are getting things from the past and then you are showing them in the present and then mm -hmm. technology comes to play. How does technology mm -hmm. help? It helps a lot, actually. Uh, rather than, you know, um, in the old days when filmmaking was in the early stages, people, you, you would use scissors and cut through frames and stuff. Now it's like, you know, you can create a blockbuster on an iPad. Um, through so many applications and uh, systems and softwares, you can, you, you can do anything on a computer or an iPad or an iPhone. The first film I created was on an iPad mini, an Apple iPad mini. And what happened at the time was that I was scrolling through the app store and I found a, an application entitled iMovie. I thought that it would be and it would be an app where I can watch free movies. But uh, then it turns out that there you can create a film. And I created my first documentary in, I get in 30 minutes. So, oh. you know, it, it helps a lot. The technology helps a lot in creating films. Let's get back to your word, a blockbuster. How can you make a blockbuster? Well, you can create a blockbuster if you, if you have a perfect idea and you have a perfect story. 
and the way you will put that story, that'll create a blockbuster. You know, per, you need perfect music. You need perfect video. If you're narrating the film, you need perfect narration and everything has to be perfect. And that will, uh, and then the outcome of that will be a blockbuster film. When you are making your films, how much or how big is the role of the audience? Do you think about them or do you make the film and then let's see what the audience will do? I always think about the audience. Uh, I've learned from a mistake in the past that, you know, if I don't think of the audience, they'll be like, uh, you know, how come are you creating this uh, such video? I'll tell you an incident. Uh, in 2017, my film about the Second World War, I put some footages of a speech by Hitler and it was very offensive. <laughs> turned out to be a very offensive speech and I didn't thought of the audience and the film was unsuccessful. Since then, I have been creating films in, uh, with in mind that the audience, how, how would the audience would feel about such film? You know, when they'll see it, I'm, I, when I'm creating, when I'm editing, I think like a director, but when I'm reviewing it, I'll think like, I don't know, what is this film about? And I want to think about it, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so interesting. Okay, let me about, uh, let, let, Tell me about a moment that while you were reviewing the film, you said, oh yeah, that's, that will be a very fantastic film. And then in another moment when you said, oh no, 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 let's remove this film. It happens every time, you know. Um, right now as I'm working on another film, uh, we are working with Amazon Prime. It will be there soon. Um, we are working on it. So when I, when I, make, it, when I make that film, I'll, like, I'll get every footage, put it on. And when I'm watching it, okay, the first scene, the first scene is perfect. The last scene, it's perfect. But the middle scene, that's very problematic. So you have to remove it. Uh, and then, you know, we go back to the process of video finding. So, you know, we have to think like an audience to create a perfect film. Great. Uh, so you, you are saying we. So there is a group of people around you. Yeah. No, no, no. We. Um, I wouldn't say we. For, uh, you know, with we, I meant all the filmmakers. Uh, oh, yeah. But, you know, I work alone. I don't have a team. I am the editor, composer, director, producer, everything. Perfect. Let me say, ask you this, like, um, for filmmaking, is it different from a country to another? It sometimes is, but, you know, most of the time it's all similar. So countries differ, you know, in terms of thinking and um, ideology, but mostly, you know, it's all the same. Filmmaking is always the same. Okay, now you are not doing what your generation is doing, which is um, watching movies in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the cinema, playing computer games, uh, having fun. Why aren't you doing that? Oh, I do it all the time. I do it all the time. I got a complete collection of video games and uh, films and everything. But, you know, I manage my time. Um, you know, I have certain time to study. You know, uh, I am... I'm a high school senior, so I have to go college next year, so I have to prepare for that. Uh, I need to create a film so I can go and, and publish it on Amazon Prime. I have to have fun because it's, all, it's something of my age and talk to my friends and spend time with family. So I divide my time, you know, um, day to day. But yeah, I do have, I do, you know, play video games and watch a lot of films. Okay, now, uh, do you think you are in the good position to be able to uh, talk to the world? I think I am. Um, you know, I've been, I've created 17 films. I have uh, in, uh, 11 international awards and recognitions. Uh, um, created a good, good rec reputation in Hollywood and in the Indian film industry. I, I believe I'm in a good position to tell, uh, uh, tell the world about, the st about stories from the past and how we can prevent problems in the future. And uh, at this moment in the 21st century, I think young people can do a lot of things to change the world rather than the people who are in power. I can give example of Greta Thunberg and other young people who are doing extraordinary things. What else would you like to say? Don't stop thinking, you know, ideas are unlimited and uh, you, you know, don't let anybody come in your way if you're doing something perfect, you know, if you think about it, if you want to do it, just do it. You know, if, if you have passion for something, then I'm, I'm sure it's going to pay you back and you'll be successful. It has been great talking to you, Tanmay. Uh, I really hope your, your, all your dreams come true and you, you uh, head the stars and uh, uh, achieve everything in your life. Thank you, Noah. Thank you very much. It was really nice to talking to you.